Chapter 17, The Heir of Slytherin. He was standing at the end of a very long, dimly lit chamber. Towering, towering stone pillars entwined with more carved serpents rose to support a ceiling lost in darkness, casting long black shadows through the odd greenish gloom that filled the place. His heart was beating very, very fast. Harry, his heart beating very fast. Harry stood listening to the chill silence. Could the basilisk be lurking in a shadowy corner behind a pillar? And where was Jenny? He pulled out his wand and moved forward between the serpentine, serpentine columns. Every careful footstep echoed loudly off of the shadowy walls. He kept his eyes narrowed, ready to clamp them shut at the smallest sign of movement. The hollow eye sockets of the stone snake seemed to be following him. More than once, with a jolt of his stomach, he thought he saw one stir. Then, as he drew level with the last pair of pillars, a statue high as the chamber itself loomed into view, standing against the back wall. Harry had to crane his neck to look up into the giant face above. It was ancient and monkeyish, with a long, thin beard that fell almost to the bottom of the wizard's sweeping stone robes, where two enormous gray feet stood on the smooth chamber floor. And between the feet, face down, lay a small black robe figure with flaming red hair. Jenny, Harry muttered, sprinting to her and dropping to his knees. Jenny, don't be dead. Please don't be dead. He flung his wand aside, grabbed Jenny's shoulders, and turned her over. Her face was as white as marble and as cold, yet her eyes were closed. So she wasn't petrified, So, but then she must be. Jenny, please wake up, Harry muttered desperately, shaking her. Jenny's head lulled hopelessly from side to side. She won't wake, said a soft voice. Harry jumped and spun around on his knees. A tall, black-haired boy was leaning against the nearest pillar, watching. He was strangely blurred around the edges, as though Harry were looking at him through a misted window. But there was no mistaking him. Tom? Tom Riddle? Riddle nodded, not taking his eyes off Harry's face. What do you mean she won't wake? Harry said desperately. She's not... She's not. She's still alive, said Riddle, but only just. Harry stared at him. Tom Riddle had been at Hogwarts 50 years ago, yet here he stood, a weird misty light shining around about him, not a day older than 16. Are you a ghost? said Harry uncertainly. A memory, said Riddle quietly, pres preserved in a diary for 50 years. He pointed toward the floor near the statue's giant toes. Lay, lying open, there was, a, there was the little black diary Harry had found in Moaning Myrtle's bathroom. For a second, Harry wondered how it, had, how it had got there, but there was more pressing matters to deal with. You've got to help me, Tom, Harry said, raising Jenny's head again. We've got to get her out of here. There's a basilisk. I don't know where it is, but it could be along any moment. Please help me. Riddle didn't move. Harry, sweating, managed to hoist Jenny off the floor and bent to pick up his wand again. But his wand had gone. Did you see? He looked up. Riddle was still watching him, twirling Harry's wand between his long fingers. Thanks, said Harry, stretching out his hand for it. A smile curved curled the corners of Riddle's mouth. He continued to stare at Harry, twirling the wand idly. Listen, said Harry urgently, his knees sagging with Jenny's dead weight. We've got to go. If the basilisk comes, it won't come until it's called, said Riddle calmly. Harry lowered Jenny back onto the floor, unable to hold her up any longer. What do you mean? He said. Look, 
Give me my wand. I might need it. Riddle's smaller smile broadened. You won't be needing it, he said. Harry stared at him. What do you mean I won't be? I've waited a long time for this, Harry Potter, said Riddle. For the chance to see you, to speak to you. Look, said Harry, losing patience. I don't think you get it. We're in the Chamber of Secrets. We can talk later. We are going to talk now, said Riddle, still smiling broadly, and he pocketed Harry's wand. Harry stared at him. There was something very funny going on here. How did Jenny get like this? He asked slowly. Well, that's an interesting question, said Riddle pleasantly, and quite a long story. I suppose the real reason Jenny Weasley's like this is because she opened her heart and spilled all her secrets to an invisible stranger. What are you talking about? said Harry. The diary, said Riddle. My diary. Little Jenny's been writing in it for months and months, telling me all her pitiful worries and woes, how her brothers tease her, how she had come to school with secondhand robes and books, how, Riddle's eyes glinted, how she didn't think famous, good, great Harry Potter would ever like her. All the time he spoke, Riddle's eyes never left Harry's face. There was an almost hungry look in them. It was very boring having to listen to the silly little troubles of an 11-year-old girl, he went on. But I was patient. I wrote back. I was sympathetic. I was kind. Jenny simply loved me. No one's ever understood me like you, Tom. I'm so glad I've got this diary to confide in. It's like having a friend I can carry around in my pocket. Riddle laughed, a high, cold laugh that didn't suit him. It made the hairs stand up on the back of Harry's neck. If I say it myself, Harry, I've always been able to charm the people I needed. So Jenny poured out her soul to me, and her soul happened to be exactly what I wanted. I grew stronger and stronger on a diet of her deepest fears, her darkest secrets. I grew powerful, far more powerful than little Miss Weasley. Powerful enough to start feeding Miss Weasley a few of my secrets. To start pouring a little of my soul back into her. What do you mean, said Harry, whose mouth had gone very dry. Haven't you guessed it yet? Harry Potter, said Riddle softly. Jenny Weasley opened the Chamber of Secrets. She strangled the school roosters and daubed threatening messages on the walls. She set the serpent of Slytherin on four mudbloods and the squib's cat. No, Harry whispered. Yes, said Riddle calmly. Of course, she didn't know what she was doing at first. It was very amusing. I wish you could have seen her new diary entries. Far more interesting they became. Dear Tom, he recited, watching Harry's horrid face. I think I'm losing my memory. There are rooster feathers all over my robes, and I don't know how they got there. Dear Tom, I can't remember what I did on the night of Halloween but a cat was attacked and I've got paint all down my front. Dear Tom, Percy keeps telling me I'm pale and I'm not myself. I think he suspects me. <clears throat> there was another attack today and I don't know where I, I don't know where I was. Tom, what am I going to do? I think I'm going mad. I think I'm the one attacking everyone, Tom. Harry's fists were clenched, his nails digging deep into his palms. It took a very long time for stupid little Jenny to stop trusting her diary, said Riddle. But she finally became suspicious and tried to dispose of it. And that's where you came in, Harry. You found it. And I couldn't have been more delighted. 
Of all the people who could have picked it up, it was you, the very person I was most anxious to meet. And why did you want to meet me, said Harry. Anger was coursing through him, and it was an effort to keep his voice steady. Well, you see, Jenny told me all about you, Harry, said Riddle. Your whole fascinating history. His eyes roved over the lightning scar on Harry's forehead, and their expression grew hungrier. I knew I must find out more about you, talk to you, meet you if I could. So I decided to show you my famous capture of the great oaf Hagrid to gain your trust. Hagrid's my friend, said Harry, his voice shaking. And you framed him, didn't you? you th I thought you made a mistake, but... Riddles laughed. Riddle laughed his high laugh again. It was my words against Hagrid's, Harry. Well, you can imagine how it looked to old Armando Dippet. On the one hand, Tom Riddle, poor but brilliant, parentless and but so brave, school prefect, model student. On the other hand, big, blundering Hagrid, in trouble every other week, trying to raise werewolf cubs under his bed, sneaking off to the Forbidden Forest to wrestle trolls. But I admit, even I was surprised how well the plan worked. I thought someone must realize that Hagrid couldn't possibly be the heir of Slytherin. It had taken me five whole years to find out everything I could about the Chamber of Secrets and discover the secret entrance, as though Hagrid had the brains or the power. Only the transfiguration teacher, Dumbledore, seemed to think Hagrid was innocent. He persuaded Dippet to keep Hagrid get to keep Hagrid and train him as gamekeeper. Yes, I think Dumbledore might have guessed. Dumbledore never seemed to like me as much as the other teachers did. I bet Dumbledore saw right through you, said Harry, his teeth gritted. Well, he certainly kept an annoyingly close watch on me after Hagrid was expelled, said Riddle carelessly. I, it, I would... Uh, I knew it wouldn't be safe to open the chamber again while I was still at school. But I wasn't going to waste those long years I had spent searching for it. I decided to leave behind a diary, preserving my 16-year-old self in its pages, so that one day, with luck, I would be able to lead in another in my footsteps and finish Salazar Slytherin's noble work. Well, you haven't finished it said Harry triumphantly. No one's died this time, not even the cat. In a few hours, the mandrake drop will be, will be ready, and everyone who is petrified will be all right again. Haven't I already told you, said Riddle quietly, that killing mudbloods doesn't matter to me anymore. For many months now, my new target has been you. Harry stared at him. Imagine how angry I was the next time my diary was opened. It was Jenny who was writing to me, not you. I saw you, she saw you with the diary, you see, and panicked. What if you found out how it worked, how, how to work it, and I repeated all of her secrets to you? What if even worse, I told you who had been strangling the roosters? So the foolish little brat waited until your dormitory was deserted and stole it back. But I knew what I must do. It was clear to me that you were on the trail of Slytherin's heir. From everything Jenny had told me about you, I knew you would go to any lengths to solve the mystery. Particularly if one of your best friends was attacked. And Jenny told me the whole school was buzzing because you could speak parcel tongue. So I made Jenny write her own farewell on the wall and come down here to wait. She struggled and cried and became very boring. But there isn't much life left in her. She put too much into the diary, into me, even the, enough to let me leave its pages at last. I have been waiting for you to appear since we arrived here. I knew you'd come. I have so many questions for you, Harry Potter. 
Like what? Harry spat, his fist still clenched. Well, said Riddle, smiling pleasantly, how is it that you, a skinny boy with no extraordinary magical talent, managed to defeat the greatest wizard of all time? How did you escape with nothing but a scar while Lord Voldemort's powers were destroyed? There was an odd red gleam in his hungry eyes now. How, why do you care how I escaped? Said Harry slow, slowly. Voldemort was before your time. Or after your time, sorry. Not before. Oops. Voldemort was after your time. Voldemort, said Riddle softly, is my past, present, and future. Harry Potter. He pulled Harry's wand from his pocket and began to trace through the air, writing three shimmering words, Tom, Marvolo, Riddle. Then he waved the wand once and the letters of his name rearranged themselves. I am Lord Voldemort.